This is Just Flecky Therapy on Wheels. Jaytel, turn you and your relationship to a safe place. And I am Olu Folake. This is week four of the 10 weeks to fix your relationship. You may also want to listen to week one, week two, and week three. Like I said before, this is week four. And our agenda is to help you be at peace with yourself and follow peace with all men, your partner inclusive. You're only able to calm down outwardly when you have calmness within you. Anxiety is a major cause of lack of peace. When you are fearful, in doubt, or insecure, you cannot but be anxious. Usually, people express this inward emotions outwardly through impatience, being irritable, and even anger. When you get agitated or furious about issues, you're only given an expression to what you feel inwardly. We're broken in some sort of way, and we usually take it out on them by lashing out or even by withdrawing. Threatening to leave or move away is the coward's way of saying, I am scared of you hurting me, or I will hurt you before you get a chance to hurt me. You can only have peace when you are ready to confront your brokenness. If you let peace into your heart, your relationship will be the first to benefit from it. I know this is easier said than done, but we need to begin the process by taking baby steps this week. Every day for the next seven days we'll be busy. Before I begin telling you five things to do the seven days, I'd love you to practice three techniques to calm down your nerves because you definitely will need them. The first is learning how to breathe properly when you're hyper aroused. Inhale softly and deeply through your nose with a relaxed shoulder. Hold your breath for a few seconds and then exhale slowly through your mouth. Repeat this breathing exercise for several minutes. You'll be needing it. Make sure you perfect it. The second is the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 technique. When you begin to feel tightness in your chest, stop whatever you're doing. Take a look around you and name or describe five things you can see. Be intentional about it. Then touch four things around you. Feel the texture. Take it in. Try to listen to three things around you also. Maybe the tick of a clock, a running water, roughing of a paper. Attend to those sounds. Try to see if you can smell two things, maybe like your perfume or like the air around you. And then lastly, say out loud one good thing you know about yourself. Like, I'm so good, I'm so beautiful, I'm so thoughtful. Just say something good about yourself. The third technique is called tapping. Give yourself a butterfly hug like this and then tap your left and then your right, your left and your right. Do it eight times and then stop. If you're not still calm, do it over again. With these three techniques, let's move on to the agenda of this week. Like I said, you'll be doing five things. And the first one is identify your fears and their sources and write them down in a journal. Now, while writing, do it in the second and third person. What I mean by that is, instead of writing, I just say, she shoved her. The her is you. The she is the abuser. Journaling helps you to tap into your feelings by bringing to surface those deep things in your heart. It also commences your healing process. You may be needing the techniques I talked about earlier. If you suddenly feel very uncomfortable, this journaling may take you down memory lane. This will require you analyzing the dynamics of your family of origin. What was the family culture like? How was communication like? Was there any emotional, physical, mental, or sexual abuse? If yes, who was the abuser and who was the abused? Were there family secrets? Were you treated fairly? Did you have a say? While growing up, did you feel protected? If there is a fear of abandonment in your heart, was there any death in the family? Or did you change schools a lot? Did you have nanny growing up? How often were they replaced? Did you relocate a lot? 
losing friends and loved ones? Was any of your parents lonely or abandoned? Do you have a body image in you? Do you lack confidence in yourself because you were verbally abused or put down when you were growing up? Are you just replaying the scenes in your family of origin? These are just few cues to how you can identify your fears and the sources. Now, the second thing you need to do is take a day off during the week or maybe an evening off and go to a quiet place, a peaceful place where you can, you know, just breathe in air and let go of everything in your chest. It could be a beach or a church or even to someone who gives you a sense of comfort. If you're able to share with them, do it. Sometimes we need to talk to someone who makes us feel safe. Now, the next thing you need to do is write a letter to the younger you, like you were comforting a little girl or a little boy. It's just that the little girl, the little boy is you. And then the fourth thing you need to do is commence your forgiveness journey. Write forgiveness notes to people in your life who hurt you in the past or who are even hurting you presently. The fifth thing you need to do is take some time to do some meditation. Each of these five things I've mentioned may take days, weeks, or even months. Do not give up until you recover who you truly are. Only then can you follow peace with all men. A meal of bread and water in contented peace is better than a banquet spiced with quarrels. And this is just flaky therapy on wheels. And I am Olufolake. Remember to like what you're hearing and subscribe to this channel.